Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. This time we got a video on a new production item, but it's still a military item, just not surplus. So, what do we have? We have a Wolf Performance A1 Upper. Um, and that is a short stroke gas system for your AR. Um, essentially what this is though, is a copy of the um, Republic of China's T91. Um, or Taiwan, as they're commonly known. So this is a pretty cool setup. Um, so Wolf uh, imports all of the parts um, other than the barrel. Now the barrel, every source I've seen says we get them in as a barrel blank. Um, for whatever reason, the ATF wouldn't allow Wolf to import these um, as completed barrels. So I'm not sure if that means the rifling is done in the barrel already and they're just finishing off the profiling, um, you know, or what extent that blank is a blank but i know the original military ones were cold hammer forged and every single advertisement i've seen for this wolf a1 it is saying these are cold hammer forged barrels as well um so you still got a very good quality barrel it was finished in the u.s though um and then the upper receiver housing itself i've seen some Credible sources say that this housing does come from Taiwan. I've seen other credible sources saying um, that Wolf is actually producing these in the U.S. So I'm not 100% sure there. What I do know is what it's made of, and that is 7075T6. Um, and these come from the 205th Armory of the Republic of China, um, better known as Taiwan. The People's Republic of China is probably what you're thinking when most people say chi uh, China, um, and that's Communist China. Uh, but these are made at the 205th Armory, um, and that is in, this is the part where I'm going to piss off every single one of my Taiwanese viewers, if I have any. Um, but that is located in Kaohsiung City, that's K-A-O-H-S-I-U-N-G City, and that has a population of roughly 2.8 million people. Um... So other things that the 205th Armory makes, first off, I thought this was kind of cool. Um, if you buy any of the Wolf uh, Gold 223 ammo, that's actually coming from the 205th Armory in Taiwan. Now, I I'm assuming that's a commercial load that they make just for Wolf. I don't think it's the same stuff they're making for the military. Maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but it does come out of that same factory. So that's kind of cool, which also means I'm such a nerd, I'm gonna have to get at least like a box of that so I can uh, have one of my T91 mags loaded up with that. Not that it would work any better in this than any other 223, but just because I'm a geek. Other things that come out of the 205th Armory is the T75 pistol. Yeah, they make the T75 pistol, guys. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I had to look it up too. Um, so basically, uh, to tell you what the T75 is, imagine a SIG, 226 just getting high off of angel, angel dust, completely blitzed. And here comes along a Breda M9 that's just completely intoxicated off of rum. And those two make a love child. Boom, that's your T75, guys. Um, I don't know how I can get any more descript uh, than that on that pistol. They also make the T93 sniper rifle. It's just a bolt action rifle, um, as well as the XT97 assault rifle. And I even saw something about them like making drones. I'm not sure if these are surveillance drones or armed drones, but yeah, they're getting into the drone game as well. So you can get these uppers and it's just the upper. I have the lower on here, just kind of give you guys a better idea of what it would look like when you get it. This is the Bear Creek lower that you've seen me do a review on. So when you get this upper, you are just getting the upper. That's it, no rear sight. You do have a front sight post. Um, it's got the charging handle, the bolt carrier, the bolt, everything you need. You're just going to need to supply your own upper and rear sight if you need one. Or if you're really good, you know, you just shoot it from the hip and you hit bullseyes. So Wolf is importing this in a couple different sizes. You can get it in a 12.5 inch barrel, 14.5 inch barrel, which if you're wanting to make a T91 clone, which is a pretty popular thing to do and very tempting, but I'm telling myself, no, I am not doing that. Um, the 14.5 inch barrel is the one you're going to get. I know you're like, oh crap, but I don't want to miss the whole SBR thing. Ah, 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 ah. Fret not. Because you just take this uh, muzzle device here, you uh, pin and weld it in place, and you're over 16 inches. So if you're doing a clone, it's not like you're going to be changing out your... Uh, excuse me, man, got belchy all of a sudden. It's not like you're going to be changing out your uh, muzzle brakes very often. 
So just get the proper muzzle brake, pin and weld it, boom, you got yourself a rifle. And of course they also have the 16 inch barrel, which is what we see here. And I'll go over some of the differences um, between those wolf barrels, if I remember it here in a second, and kind of go over why I specifically got this one. So one of the neat things about this, um, this is the first time that the 205th Armory has sold anything on the commercial market. Um, when I looked them up on YouTube trying to find videos about this, not a whole lot of information. There is a fair amount out there. Footnote, Michiko, you guys heard me praise him many times before, as well as um, Small Arm Solutions. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and I've used him as a resource too. Michiko's great if you have AK question, questions. Small Arm Solutions is great if you have AR questions. Um, both of those guys um, have several videos on this. Great information. The... 95% of the information I have actually came from those videos. I highly recommend go checking out their channels, even if you don't care about this gun. Um, they're very knowledgeable and they don't put out really any misinformation. Um, so first time that's been offered on the commercial market, uh, the 205th Army has offered anything on the commercial market. Like I said, when I looked it up, not a whole lot of videos. I did find a crap ton um, of Taiwanese news stories. I don't speak Chinese, so I don't know what the hell they were saying. Um, but it was about this Wolf A1 Upper. Um, and basically you can kind of tell that, you know, they're offering on the commercial market. I think I did find one news source. Luckily it was broadcast in English so I could kind of see what they're talking about. Or I guess hear what they were talking about. Um, but basically like Taiwan got a big kick out of this. They thought it was pretty awesome that the 205th Armory was selling things on the commercial market. I do see several videos of guys shooting these and they're speaking i believe chinese i'm assuming they're in taiwan um uh so you know i believe they're offered there on the commercial market as well but according to some of these news uh reports um the first day that wolf offered these they sold over a thousand units on the very first day and that was a couple years ago not too long ago but they they've had them out here for now for a while um so i thought that was just kind of neat a little uh backstory on that now the heritage of this whole t91 gun um, starts with the T65, which is basically just a gas piston AR. Um, it was mounted with the M16 lower. That was introduced in 1976. Now I've noticed that the numbering on the Taiwanese firearms, it's kind of, it reminds me of like the Arasakas. It's, it's not the calendar year that it was put out, but rather um, like the year of the ruler or the year of the Republic of China. So 1976, um, was the 65th year of the Republic of China, hence why the gun was called the T-65 and not the T-76, just so you know. Uh, the gun has slowly evolved through the years, obviously, just like our uh, AR-15. The T-86 uh, carbine, that's basically this guy here, well, the upper, you know what I'm saying. Um, my understanding is the T-86, the only difference between that and the T-91 the T-86, the carry handle, was fixed um, on the gun. And then with the T-91, the big change there was it was a flat top, kind of making it much more like the American M4. So the T-91 development um, completed in 2002, and full production began in 2003, which kind of surprised me, because um, the thing that caught my eye about this uh, upper here was that handguard. I mean, I saw that. And immediately, I'm having clips of like Terminator going through my head. Any kind of action movie from the 80s and 90s you can think of. The, the, I'm a nerd. You guys know me. That hangar just is very reminiscent of it. Made me think of a Daewoo, even though looking at pictures of a Daewoo, it doesn't really look the same all that much. But anyway, so that really is what caught my eye. And so I was surprised to find out that this didn't go into full production in 2003. Now, of course, I believe the T86 carbine did also use this hangar, so that would make sense. But the fact that they're still using this style um, is just kind of shocking. Now, they do have a quad rail. The military does offer a quad rail, and you can get that along with a lot of the other um, authentic T96 add-ons from T, uh, or excuse me, T91. I hope I haven't been saying T96 this whole time. It's T91. Um, but you can get a lot of stuff from T91 Tactical. Um, and I've had a little bit of experience with their customer service. I believe it was Sean. Um, I'm very happy, which is good, um, because they're like the only company that offers this stuff. Um, so, yeah, great customer service. I'll do another video, um, probably here in the next two weeks, about all the different accessories 
for the specific T91 and what you want to, you know, do kind of if you're making a clone. Once again, that's not my plan. I promise I don't want to do that. I want to do my own thing. So anyways, going back to this guy, full production in 2003. Um, it does have a four position fire select, which I thought was kind of cool. You're not just stuck with, you know, semi-auto and three round burst or semi-auto and full auto. You have safe, fire, three round burst, and full auto. You got the full menu. Pretty cool. Um, and like I said, the military version was a 14.5 inch barrel. Um, and the overall length with that muzzle device on there puts it at 16.4. So if you wanted to do a clone, you want it to be a rifle, just, you know, pin and weld that uh, muzzle break in place and you are more than good. Now the military version has a chrome line chamber and bore. The one that Wolf is putting out does not. I forget the coating that they said this is covered in. I don't think it was melanin. I think it was something else kind of along those same lines, but it's still a pretty good quality coating for the inside of that chamber. So I'm not too concerned about it. I'm not a huge shooter. I'm more of a collector than I am a shooter. I personally kind of feel like people might be too big of a deal out of chrome lining. I might be speaking out of my butt. So some people might get all, oh, no, I'm not getting anything unless it's chrome lined. Okay, that's cool. That's your, you know, uh, option. Um, but to me, you clean the gun after you shoot it, you're fine. Now, I do believe T91 Tactical does offer um, these uppers in different barrel sizes with chrome lined barrels and those ones i do believe come with the proper front sight post i'll get into that later um but you are paying a premium like double what the wolf a1 is so you're like oh that's what i'll do just you know take that for what it is so uh the t91 was also designed to be able to use the t85 40 millimeter grenade launcher attachment so that's always fun when you can launch a grenade from your rifle. I do believe the T86 was able to use that attachment as well. Um, some of the variations of the T91, guys, I tried looking into this so I can kind of give you a very good breakdown. I felt I couldn't find too much information. Um, so the T91, which is, you know, the basic upper. You have the T91 CQC. Now that one, I have no clue what it is. Um, then you have the T91S. Now that one... Actually, yes, that came with the improved quad rail handguards. Now, some sources say it has a 16-inch barrel. Mishka goes over this, too. A lot of the places that are talking about these are measuring the muzzle device. So you're getting all kinds of crazy different barrel lengths. So they might be measuring the whole thing, and it's still just a 14.5-inch barrel. Maybe it did get a slightly longer barrel. I've also seen other reports say that the barrel is a little bit thicker. Now, this one is, too. Once again, I'll get into that a little bit. So if you want to make a T91S... Um, clone the 16 inch barrel might be your option at the very least you, you get the thicker barrel you can cut it down to 14.5 I don't know so that's the T91S um, there's the T91K1 now that one I don't know what it is um, and then the T91K3 which is actually pretty cool all honesty that one had polygonal rifling on the barrel which is simply designed to last longer before they had to replace the barrel so there's that so the barrel thickness. The mil spec barrel thickness was 15.9 millimeters. We'll just say 16. Um, but these wolf barrels are actually 18 millimeters thicker. Now, a lot of this goes back to this front sight post. I said this is a T91 upper, and it is, but this front sight is a version, from my understanding, it's a version of the T86 front sight. I've also read other sources that say the T86 barrel was actually a little bit thicker than what it is on the T91 at 18 millimeters, which is what the wolf barrels are. Now, all the wolf barrels underneath this gas block, they are going to be 18 millimeters thick. Um, the two smaller barrels, they step down once it exit that gas, exits the gas block. Um, it steps down from 18 millimeters to 15.9. So... It still has that slightly thinner profile that the military ones have. And, you know, if they're using the T86 front sight post gas block, and that was 18 millimeters, that would make sense. Now, like I said, for whatever reason, on the 16-inch barrel ones that Wolf is making, they do not step it down once this barrel leaves that gas block. So it is a slightly thicker barrel. And that comes to why I got the 16-inch barrel one. 
I was going back and forth as to whether I wanted to do a clone. I didn't know much about these. Like I said, the can guard caught my eye, and then I started researching it. Yeah, that's how I get most of the guns I have, guys. Um, and so I started doing some research. I'm like, well, a clone would be kind of cool, but it's like, God, it's an AR. Um, you know, I have all these historical guns, and I try not to modify them. Gar Raymond, I want something fun to, you know, just put my own little signature on, so to say. So I'm trying to force myself not to make a T91 clone. So I figured I won't get the 14.5 inch barrel, I'll get the 16 inch. Then it's like, oh, but what if I get that? I'm like, damn, I really wanted to do a clone. Well, this is still a slightly thicker barrel out here. Worst case scenario, if I'm dead set on making a clone, I figured I could, you know, take this to a gunsmith, have them cut it back to 14.5, rethread it, all that. You know, and then I still have a little bit of the advantage of having a slightly thicker barrel. I don't think that would drive me completely nuts, though, um, if I were to do that. But you guys also know me, it probably would. So some things to know if you are wanting to make a T91 clone. First and foremost is that barrel length. You know, what route are you wanting to go? Is having a 16-inch barrel going to bug you compared to having a 14.5? Some people won't care. Some might prefer to have that slightly longer barrel. So just know the 14.5 is proper. It's easy to pin and weld it to make it the proper length for a rifle. So you don't have to worry about that. The other big thing is this front sight post. Like I said, this is the T86 sight post, or at least a version of it. The proper T91 front sight post, the ears are slightly different. See how these are kind of angled? Well, the T91, they're, they're kind of even. I mean, you could flip this around and I don't think you would know the difference. Um, and they're also straight up, whereas these are kind of curved in there. So, slight difference there. The other downside is this front sight post is not removable on the T91. So that's another reason I think Wolf probably wanted to go with the T86. My understanding, once again, is the T86 of front sight post was removable. Um, I don't know why, since it had a fixed carry handle. I might be wrong on that, but either way, that's the one big benefit of this particular sight post being on it, because you can remove that sight post. You got a little roll pin there, and it just drifts right out. And that's a big advantage when you're trying to sell an AR upper on the American market. You want that option to have it all flat so you can run optics and not have anything in your way. So that just makes business sense to me as to why they went with this one. But if you're wanting to make a clone, that's something you're going to want to do, change that out. And the big, big reason is what this is missing is the bayonet lug. And there's also a small little section of Piccaninny rail that kind of covered up that exposed barrel. Which is the perfect position to put a foregrip, tripod. Plus, if you have the bayonet lug, you could also put a bayonet on there. T91 Tactical sells those. Another thing to note, if you go with a 16-inch barrel and you're trying to make a clone with that 16-inch barrel bayonet, that ring for the bayonet goes right around this muzzle device. With a 16-inch one, I think that ring's going to be too far back. So just know, if you want to, if you get one of these sight posts and you're all excited and you put your bayonet on there, you're like, frack! It's not lining up, you know, properly. Um, yeah, it won't. I don't think it'll quite work with this 16-inch barrel. 14.5, no problem. But, you know, you're going to have to unpin that, put on the new one. I believe the replacements that T91 Tactical sells, um, they're somewhat of a virgin, so you still have to, like, drill out the, uh, the gas port hole. Um, but the interior is made to the proper dimensions for these newer Wolf barrels. I think they do sell like military spec ones as well. Because what people would do before, they would turn the barrel down and then put on the actual military one. Well, I think the arsenal in Taiwan now makes these for Wolf, because they know how popular these are getting, for that bigger diameter barrel. So putting the uh, proper front sight post used to be a lot more expensive because you also had to turn that barrel down some. Now, luckily, we do have front sight posts where we don't have to turn the barrel down. Um, but you're still, you know, unpinning that front sight post, putting it on there. I have no clue what that would run in a gunsmith. I've never priced anything like that. But just be aware that if you want to make a T91 clone and you want to make it accurate, it's not just simply getting the different little easy attachment add-on parts. Um, it's going to start adding up. You know, some of the stuff is cheap. Like the muzzle device, I think, these come with is the T86. Now, I believe they did used to come with the actual T91 muzzle um, device, which is this right here. Pretty much the same thing, only we have these ports along the side. 
um, which is kind of neat. I will point out real quick this muzzle device. It's interesting. Actually, it's going to be impossible to show you on the gun, so I'm going to show you on the one that's off. So we have your little center mark there. So we got one little uh, open flash hiding flange, whatever you want to call that, top dead center, and one row of these ports. And you notice the other two rows are off to the side. So when you look on this, you'll notice that there's only one opening to the shooter's left side, whereas there's two openings to the shooter's right side. Now the reason for that is think of an AK-47 slant brick. It's the gun's going to want to ride up and to the right of the shooter. So they've angled this in a way to try to get the gun to push down and to the left, which I thought was just kind of cool. Some people like that might drive them completely nuts with it not being, you know, perfectly symmetrical. Now the other thing you could do is just rotate it some, you know, go ahead and line it up where it is flat. I mean, there's going to be a little bit more. You're going to have, you know, the ports still off to your, the extra line of ports off to your side, but whatever. I thought that was just kind of neat. And like I said, the ones that are currently coming on there, it's just the flash hider. There's no ports. Like I said, I think this is the one for the T86. I could be wrong. Um, don't quote me on that, guys. I'm assuming Wolf did that just kind of help cut down on cost. Also, um, this front sight post, they used to come with two different sight posts. Now they just come with one. The front sight post that is in there, if you get one of the uh, newer uppers from Wolf, that is going to be set up for your standard AR rear sights. So if you want to put on a standard AR carry handle or flip up sights out of the box, you are good to go. If you want to use one of the T91, so if you're doing a T91 clone, they've got like a little, uh, it's not a flip up rear sight, it's just a standalone little rear iron sight back here. It's slightly taller or lower, I forget which way, but you're gonna have to change out that front sight post. And the same thing with the carry handle that these originally came with. You're gonna change out that front sight post. Once again, T91 Tactical does offer those. So you are able to, uh, you know, change that out. It's not unobtainable if you want to do. But that's just what I'm saying. A lot of these little things, like, they just add up. Even the, uh, excuse me, um, the front sight, I believe it's, you need the older style AR front sight tool. It's got five pins rather than four. So just little things like that. And even like the, uh, the T91 rear sight. That is a carry handle. That is $160. For a carry handle. So if you want to make a clone, you need to be willing to spend 160 bucks for a carry handle. I personally don't know what idiot would spend that much on a carry handle. Or maybe I do. So, um, once again, I promise you guys, I am not making a T91 clone. I don't think. I'm trying to do my own thing. So, uh, that's your uh, barrel thickness there. Now... Who uses the T91 or who used the T91? I'm sure they're still in use around the world. First and foremost, obviously, Taiwan. You know, they're making the thing. They made 240,000 of them. I did find one source that said it cost $539 each. Now, of course, they're getting the full kit and caboodle with the lower rear sight and all that jazz. Um, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, $539. Bucks. Um, the second biggest order would be Jordan. They ordered 20,000. Now, I actually know a guy that used to be in the Jordanian military. He's now a U.S. citizen. And uh, I used to go out shooting with him quite a bit. And he always got a kick out of whenever, you know, he'd go to the shooting range with most of his other buddies. And they're all bringing, you know, AR-15s and Glocks. And I go to the shooting range with him. And uh, I'm bringing Mosin Nagants and SKSs. And I think one time he even joked, he's like, man, when I go shooting with you, it's like I'm back home. Uh, but he always gets a kick out of the weird random crap I get. And so when I saw that Jordan had used 20,000 of these, I got a little excited. So I texted him. I was like, hey, what service rifle were you issued when you're with the Jordanian military? And he said it was a HK. Um, I don't think he told me the model. I'm not sure if he knew the model, but it was an HK. So I was like, okay, so you never used the T91. But I mean, he knew exactly what I was talking about. He's like, nope, that was right before me. He's like, I think they started using that in 2002. Well, production was 2003, so he's like a year off. You know, Jordan probably got 2003, 2004, somewhere in there. Um, and then I sent him a picture of this, and he was just like, what the hell? He always gets a kick out of that crap. Um, and then Kuwait ordered 18,000 of these. Indonesia ordered 10,000. Bosnia-Herzegovina, oh, frack. 
Okay, you guys know I collect Yugoslavian crap. You know that's like, for whatever weird reason, I have no heritage or lineage to the place or any of its, uh, you know, kingdoms. But I just start collecting it. And somehow, anything that's Yugoslavian or part of the former Yugoslavia finds its way into my collection. I saw that. And boy, did I not want to make a T91 clone more than ever. Bosnia Herzegovina ordered 5,000. Guys, I promise you, I did not know that when I got this. Okay, I found that out after the fact. I had no clue. Uh, I'm innocent there. It's just, yeah, it happened. India ordered a 1,000. Haiti ordered a Peasley 100. Now, one thing, if you notice, if you look at that list or listen to that list, a lot of these places are kind of tropical areas as well as desert. Um, like the two areas that AR hates the most. Um, basically, the development of this, what they wanted was a gun... And I think it was even some guy at Jordan that said, kind of compared this gun, said, this has the durability and reliability of an AK-47, but the accuracy of an AR-15. Uh, so it's kind of like a hybrid of both of those worlds. And I don't know if I pointed it out to you. You can see a little gas block in there. I'm not going to go into a full teardown video. There's, there's plenty on there that go over all the details. Michiko and Small Arms Solutions both have one. And frankly, if you're not subscribed to either one of those channels, I'm going to force you to uh, go check out their stuff. They both have good teardown videos of this. Um, I also did see another report that said later in 2005, the Taiwanese military ordered an additional 12,000 uh, for the military police around the capital area after some incident. There's a guy with like a vehicle that drove through barricades. I don't know if anything more than that happened. Um, but after that, I don't know what they were armed with before. Um, kind of made it sound like they were just armed with handguns. But they decided they wanted something a little more hefty. Can't blame them. So, I did not write down what the capital of Taiwan was. But if you go to the capital of Taiwan, you might see some guards walking around with some of these. It's kind of neat. So, some of the features on this, like I said, we do have, they come with a flash hider. And like I said, properly, it would be a kind of combo flash hider with those ports on there. And this will take any AR-15 muzzle device. The threads are all the same. You notice it uses a uh, a lock nut rather than a crush washer. I'm pretty sure you just back this off and then remove it. So no big deal there. One kind of complaint I do have, though, is about this muzzle device. Now, I don't know how well it'll come up. I'm trying to hold this dead even. So this port should be top dead center. And it's ever so slightly turned this way, just a little more. You can also kind of tell with these slabs. So that's just a little annoying. I don't know if the guy was eating a jelly donut. When you put it on there, I keep finding like little jelly bits. Oh my God. Um, so, I mean, that, like I said, that's no big deal though. I just back that off. And I'm changing this out anyways. I have seen, I think like two people mention that these newer ones that they got from Wolf, um, the muzzle brakes are actually just loose. Like they were not even tight on there. And so I was kind of hoping mine would be that way. Because like, oh, just unscrew it. Boom, be done with it. So there's that. Like I said, this uh, the front sight post slash gas block here um, and sling attachment. I believe this is off the T86 rather than the T91. But for the commercial market in the U.S., this was the best route to go with that removable front sight post. Now, one thing that really does bug the bejesus out of me, it sucks it doesn't have the bayonet look. I can live with that. Like I said, I'm, not, I'm trying so hard not to make a clone. So no big deal there, right? But that lower Piccaninny rail, that would be kind of nice to have, you know? So I could attach a foregrip if I wanted to, or a tripod or something. But the big thing is glaring you right in the face. I mean, that's just exposed barrel. If I'm out at the range, especially if, oh, sorry guys, hope no one spilled the drink there. But if I'm at the range, especially with a new shooter and you're not paying attention and your index finger, you're gonna know real quick, you screwed up. I don't know what we can do. To fix that and keep these hand guards, you know, some kind of an insert that doesn't look horrible. Some kind of an insert that maybe pops into here. I don't know if that's like a drainage hole. We don't really need that at the range. So, uh, yeah. 3D printer people and T91 Tactical, get on it. Figure out something to pop in there. I don't even want a new hand guard. I want to keep this hand guard. But, yeah. So there's your front sight post. The uh, hand guards, they are proprietary. As you can see, there's not really a delta ring back here. Um, that's the other downside, especially if you want to do, kind of make this your own, like I'm trying to do. So AR-15s, you have an infinite number of handguard options. Wolf A1 or T91 upper, you've got three 
Yeah. Hopefully more will come out as these get more and more popular. And I'm sure there's people out there that can mod them to make them to fit. But if you're looking for something to go straight on, you got three models. You got this guy. And this does have a heat shield in it. Um, all the reviews I've seen of these, they talk about how this does not get hot at all. Which, of course, is very good. Unfortunately, it's going to be a while before I can get a chance to shoot this. I hate doing reviews without shooting guns. But, um, yeah, filming this with the whole COVID crap. So, I will be uh, doing follow-up videos for anything I review without shooting. And I personally like this one the best because it just looks... I'm sure some people think it looks ugly. I think it looks sexy as hell with these little vent holes. Notice that some of these are actually plugged up. I think that's the heat guard. Um... It's got a little hole back here. You got two holes on top. Or excuse me, three holes on top. Uh, I guess just for ventilation. You got these two screw holes. They do have an attachment. It's like a little tri picking any rail. Um, and like I said, I'll be doing a video here very shortly um, of some of those attachments, especially that rail. There's not a whole lot of photos or information about that online because you can kind of mount it both directions. But pretty sure I got it figured out. Um, the other hand guards, like I said, the what was it, the T91S. Um, T91 Tactical does offer them the actual military quad handguards. Um, they're key lock, they're not M lock. Um, but you can get those. Also, it kind of makes it look a little more like a standard AR. You know, these handguards definitely make it stand out as well as that front sight post, and that will obviously still be there. And then T91 Tactical offers another quad rail handguard that is M lock. Um, I'm not sure who makes that. Um, but yeah, so there's your three options. Sorry, guys. Like I said, this does come with a flat top. It's once again, it's pretty much just needed if you're gonna sell it in the US. You know, I mean, I personally think the carry handle is very sexy and aesthetic, uh, but it, yeah, so flat top so you can op, mount whatever you want. And like I said, out of the box, the newer ones are ready for any standard AR-15 rear sight. Um, or if you wanna get like a red dot or scope, you can only just bloop, pop off that front sight. Some of the differences on this upper, which is kind of part of the reason I feel like Wolf probably isn't making these and they might be coming from Taiwan, but I, mean, I totally could be wrong on that. So first thing you'll notice is there's no forward assist. Not really needed. Taiwan knows it. The only reason I wanted one on my Bear Creek Arsenal AR is because I figured that might be the only AR. So I wanted like the definitive AR features, forward assist, little dust door. Also does not have a shell deflector, that is absent. But you notice it, it kind of does though, they just kind of use this little beefed up ridge here um, to be your shell deflector. And then the door here, a lot of people talk about how this is the older style uh, AR door. I don't know much about ARs. I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, that's different from my Bear Creek. So I'll show you guys too. All right, and then some of the differences that would be on the T91 lower. Obviously, this is not a T91 lower. This is my Bear Creek lower. Um, T91 Tactical does sell an 80% copy of the T91 lower. It has all the proper roll marks on there and everything, but you've got to finish it, um, you know, and code it and all that jazz. So there are some differences on the T91 lower other than just having a bunch of Chinese on there. Um, the stock is actually a three position stock rather than a six position. Um, and it's a very small butt stock. It looks like some of the uh, early American ones, a little bit smaller than this. Oh, um, one of the interesting things is this little latch here. They talk about how that's metal rather than plastic. And if you wanted to do like a mismatch, get the uh, Korean stock and put it on American tube. I think the, the dimensions right here where it locks in are slightly different. So you might not be able to do that. Now you can get the... T91 tubes and they go right onto any um, AR lower and you'll be fine. Another thing is the uh, T91s do not use a castle nut. They use like a gnarled nut, which once again, I think is from like the older style ARs. And I think this looks kind of cool. I think I'm just gonna get one just because I think it looks better than a castle nut. Um, so yeah, also, oh man, I hope you guys are holding on to those drinks. Like I said, a lot of their AR designs are kind of off the older style. So this upper is not going to match 100% um, with the newer style lowers. But, I mean, it's, it functions just fine. As long as you're not super OCD, you know, I don't see it really driving anyone too nuts. The other thing that the T91 had, and I do plan on getting one of these, once again, T91 Tactical has them, is they have an anti-tilt buffer. 
And basically, what is that? since this is gas piston, you have concern of tilting of the bolt carrier. So the buffer has a little just circular ridge that sticks up and that actually locks in to the uh, bolt carrier. It's always hard to point at stuff when you're like looking through the viewfinder. Mm. Um, but that just locks in there. Now people say, and a lot of people run these with just the standard buffer and say it works just fine. But the, uh, the anti-tilt one, they say is a little bit better. It also comes, I believe, with a stiffer spring as well as a uh, H2 buffer. A lot of people will say regardless of whether or not you get the anti-tilt uh, buffer to get the H2 or higher uh, weight buffers, though. It's going to run a little bit better. According to Mishka, they, it sounds like 14.5 was a little more sensitive to that, whereas the 16-inch, he's, he's like, it didn't even care. Um, it might have just been those two specific uppers. Maybe it has something to do with the gas, you know, in the slightly longer barrel. But, uh, yeah, and then the last thing, it's not a biggie, this does come with the old school style charging handle. Once again, any charging handle for any AR will work on this just fine. You're not going to have any issues. But a lot of people are saying this is the GI style. And I was under the impression that the one I got on my Wolf, or, or excuse me, on my Bear Creek Arsenal, was a GI style. And I looked at this and I was like, oh, the one on the Wolf uppers, um, not as wide, but it actually is. It just looks a little bit thinner. But the angle is ever so slightly different. See that how it's kind of angled, it's got a curve, more ergonomic. Whereas this one's not ergonomic, but aerodynamic. But I mean, pulling on it, it's, it's no biggie. And like I said, you can switch it out with any charging handle you want on there. And then one last thing, I haven't really noticed it. I don't know if I was just in the right light. Let me get a better mag. Or this, it almost looked like there's a large gap between my upper and my lower. So I got my little C Products Dr. Pepper colored red mag. And I, now I can't see it. So I don't know if it was just like the light was shining it just at the right angle. And at the time I had the, uh, the actual T91 black mag in there. I mean, I had everything attached properly. So that gave me a little concern. I know this lower looks like crap. It looks almost purple in this light. I don't know why. Got to clean this up. Need to finish some color filler. Is going to do the safe and fire. I don't know if I'll leave this upper on this lower. I don't. I mean, I'm not an AR guy. I'm not trying to buy a bunch of AR crap. Um, but yeah, so far I'm pretty excited about this gun, guys. Um, actually, I'm really excited. I mean, I know it's no Callahan full bore auto lock. But I think this is going to be a really fun gun. And right now, this kind of looks sexy. Just all black with that one red mag on there. Like, I wouldn't do any other red highlights. I'm not trying to make a Deadpool gun. But does that not just look good? Yeah, it looked better the other way without the ugly uh, color feel. So I'm trying to think of a name for this gun. I thought Black Betty would be a good one. You know, people always talk about how the AR-15 is uh, the... The bad black gun, but I'm a Dr. Pepper hog. Okay, so maybe it's not a perfect match. Pretty close though. So we think Dr. Betty. Uh big Dr. Pepper. I like Black Betty. But I need to work in Dr. Pepper to one of my guns because I'm a Dr. Pepper holic. So uh big Dr. Pepper. Dr. Black Betty, I got it. Big Black DP. Ooh, now that I say that out loud, it doesn't sound so good. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to keep working on the name. Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you didn't, frack. I'm sorry, man. All right, have a good one, everybody. Stay shiny.